everybody how is everyone doing today i'm super excited it's saturday which means sugar bear off the top rope let's do it if you don't know what that means i'm gonna do some wrestling talk uh i'm gonna dive into a couple of things that happened over the week in the wrestling world uh or i guess the past couple weeks because i didn't do one last week and so we missed a couple things but my notebook that I have, uh, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of this. So this is my notebook. I can't do any organization because it's filled with all the boys' doodles. And they just love, like, here's some stuff, you know. But it's constantly something new with them. And uh, they have fun. So, I mean, I don't really care. Uh, I'm going a little bit profesh. I'm gonna get. I'm getting my own notebook soon. <laughs> I just uh, again, yeah. I don't know why this is the one we decided to use, but you know what? We're uh, we're going with it. So first things first. Before we dive into anything else, if you're a wrestling fan, you already know. If you follow my social media, you already know. The man, the legend, the goat. The icon, Sting, is back in the squared, cir squared circle. He has signed, uh, from what I understand, a numerous year contract uh, deal with All Elite Wrestling, AEW, and we are all very excited. All of us wrestling fans. And if you're not, I mean, I'm sorry. Honestly, I am. Uh, I can maybe understand why a little bit, just because... You know, we've we've lived through the Undertaker matches where half the match is just botches and him falling and trying to do something that he can't do anymore and stuff like that. But I don't know what their plan is with Sting. I hope Sting has obviously seen some of those Undertaker matches and has taken in consideration maybe what he can and cannot do in the ring anymore. But in the end, who knows? We haven't seen him in two years? Two or more, I would I would think. Oh, I think it's been I honestly think it's more. And then that's the kind of sad thing too, is you know, at first I kind of jumped to the conclusion because I I I find myself being very dedicated to certain things, you know, obviously work and teams and you know, wrestling companies and all that stuff. And and I love all of the wrestling. It's it's amazing. But in the end, you know, we've all been fans. At one point you've been a fan of WWE. I mean, they've just they are the wrestling world. I love AEW, how they're coming in and they're trying to, you know, take some of that pie. And, oh, what's up, Mom? Uh, so it's awesome to see, and we all know competition is good. So at first I was a little, you know, weenie gang, what's up, boys? Uh, I was a little irritated. I don't know if irritated is the right word, but it was just a little, like... I was just thrown off because I'm, I haven't, I didn't see any of the rumors that he was coming back. I didn't see rumors that he was going to AEW, honestly. So watching, uh, winter is coming and seeing the lights go out and then, you know, the, the winter scene, the blizzard, I mean, even the crow necessarily didn't give it away for me. Um, yes. And I will touch on that in a second, red. Uh, but, uh, Oh, you like the headset? So, sorry guys, if you're new to Twitch, I the reason I keep getting interrupted is because there is a live chat, so that is one cool thing about this is that, yeah, I might be talking, but in the end, I'm also interacting with the chat. So, McDenty, thank you, because my wife, I have to give her a huge shout out, uh, she gave me a early Christmas present tonight, that's why the stream's starting a little bit late, and that is uh, all new, basically set up with... Um, a mouse keyboard headset so check this out <laughs> oh my gosh isn't that sick oh look at that look at the mouse oh gosh it's awesome um so yeah yeah it, it is it's I, i'm super excited so again thank you babe i love you so much um no one else probably cares about this but it you know it means a lot to me so thank you again uh anyway so, where's mine? Uh, you know what? 
Oh, thanks, Marlon. Yeah, it is. It's real pretty. <laughs> uh, so anyway, seeing him with AEW and like Whitney said in the chat, he's home. He's on TNT. The Sting, ha- Sting has not been on TNT in 18, almost 20 years. So being a wrestling fan from basically, I think it's 99, and I'll get to that in a second as well. Um, since 99, it's just like seeing Sting, and and actually I'll dive into that real quick. So growing up, that was my mom's favorite wrestler. Hands down, the her like ultimate like man crush, all this stuff. So, And I know she's in this chat, so sorry, Mom, I'm giving your secrets away a little bit. Uh, but... The reason it started with that was the very first promo I think we both saw on WCW. And it was... Where is it? Uh, uh, I think it was April 12th, 1999. Uh, a WCW Nitro was came to Yakima, Washington. Uh, a buddy of mine in my class says, Hey, dude, I'm going to a wrestling show. And with me, I was just like... Okay, well, I, I kind of seen wrestling. I've seen matches every once in a while. I didn't really know what it was. I was not into it at all. Any of this stuff. So we're just playing on his trampoline. And again, I, this is 1999. So I mean, I was early elementary school, and uh, he started just showing me wrestlers and like foam hands he had and a bunch of different wrestling stuff. And I was like, oh, that stuff's like super cool. He showed me he had a uh, well NWO Wolfpack like foam hand. It was the Wolf. And I just, like, thought that was the coolest thing ever. So I go home, and I'm like, Mom, my buddy is going to a wrestling show. It's here in Yakima, and it's televised. So I would really love to to watch it and kind of see what it's all about. So she turns it on, and the first thing that we see is uh, Macho Man and DDP kind of go at it. And then all, all of a sudden, Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner come in and just kick the shit out of uh, DDP. But... The first promo, I mean, five minutes into the show, here comes this dude with long black hair, white and black face paint, and, I mean, I don't know my mom's feelings at that point, but I know with being a kid, just seeing that face paint and seeing just, like, this guy who just has this, his aura about him, ready to go, he, you could clearly see he was just hot and ready to go, uh, it's like, okay, what's going on? And I just listened to the promo earlier again, just to kind of bring back those memories. And it's just, it's awesome. So I started my wrestling journey with Sting. Uh, He was the first promo I've ever seen, I ever saw get cut. And it was just, ever since then, it's been magic. So he's always held a special place in my heart, obviously my mom's heart. So in our family of two, Sting was always... uh, Sting was always a big part of our wrestling community and wrestling family. So, I mean, even to this day, I think I've showed him before, but this NWO Wolfpack Sting sits on my desk, uh, my gaming desk right here by me every day. It's just, it's something that I've always kind of had there and my mom did it and I kind of like it. And it's one of my first figures I ever got. So it's just super cool. But um, anyway, getting back to just the, his debut with AEW. It's just awesome to see. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm interested to see what is going on with him and what how they're going to use him. Uh, I want to know how much he's actually going to be in the ring. And hopefully he doesn't get hurt. Last thing all of us WWE and slash wrestling fans knew is that he was uh, basically done. That Seth Rollins ended his career. But again, here we are. X amount of years later and he shows up, you know, in the ring again. So, uh, I am just, I'm super excited to just to see what happens. So, uh, a couple other things. First off, thank you everyone for chatting right now. I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Um, I am super fucking hot right now. I don't know why I'm sweating. So I'm going to get a little dabble of water. Um, the slammies are coming back this year. Uh, to me, I think the Slimies have always been a great thing. I really enjoy it. And, uh, oh, thanks, guys, for uh, for sharing the stream. Uh, I keep hitting my mic. Sorry about that. Uh, new headset. Oh, gosh, my bad. Uh, 
so the Slammys are coming back. If you don't know what the Slammys are, again, it's just a it's an award show for the WWE. And it's something that I'll probably probably a lot of people think, ah, it's rigged, who really cares? Um, you can basically tell the winner as soon as you see who's who's online for it and everything, but I think it's something entertaining. Again, I love the wrestling like the professional entertainment side of it. I love that kind of stuff. I mean, I grew up watching soap operas with my mom, so I don't know if maybe that's it, but I enjoy a good story, a good, you know, catchphrase and just things that kind of just bring you in and entice you to keep watching. And I think the Slammys are one of those. I mean, obviously back in the day with WWF, uh, it was huge with like Brett, uh, Owen Hart just because he would carry his Slammys around with him for most of the year. So it is a uh, uh, it's just something super cool to see, and I, like I said, I really enjoy it. So I hope all of most other wrestling fans do too. So I'm going to go through a couple of the categories that they already have announced because they keep announcing them just every every now and again. Um, I don't know what their plan is, how many categories there's going to be or anything, but we'll see in the end. Um, so right now I have four, and I think they're pretty much updated. So. First one is Tag Team of the Year. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let you guys know what the category is, who is uh, participating in that, and then uh, who you think, who I think is going to win. Um, so again, first one is Tag Team of the Year. We have Shinsuke and Cesaro, which, no thank you. Uh, that's just a thrown together tag team that to me really makes no sense. They haven't done a lot with, but they, they've been champions, so I just think it's something that I'm happy they're using Shinsuke, but, oh, what's up, E? Um, but it's just it makes no sense, so absolutely not. Uh, number two, the Street Profits, uh, which right now I think they're on the they're on the top for WWE tag teams. I think they're just doing a great job for main for also for main roster. I'll throw that in there. Um, number three, the New Day. Well... I mean, and I know that this goes off the whole year, but they just split the New Day up. Uh, we just saw Big E on SmackDown. He has his own entrance music now. He's kind of doing his own thing. He's doing like a LeBron throwing fucking powder up in the air and everything. So uh, we'll we'll kind of see how that goes. I'm really excited for a Big E singles push just because he's a, an amazing athlete. Just found out he's 5'11", which if you don't know who Big E is, holy shit. The guy's in like a thick animal um but he's just he's just like he's like a tank he's one of those guys where it's like you could just tell whether he lifted or not he was just like a squared body dude that clearly was a football player and could mess you up but he uh he's only 5'11 so weird but anyway so that's number three number four is Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax I actually really enjoy their tag team I think I'm a, actually a really big Shayna Baszler fan do not like Nia Jax at all, but seeing them together, they work really well together, and they have great attitudes towards each other. So I love the stuff that they're doing, just because they're just kind of like a, a dick team, and they're just going to be mean to everyone, and they're the current women's tag team champion. So I just think it's something cool, and they're doing a good job with that, with Nia. Um, and then number five is Sasha and Bayley. Never been a fan of really either one of those. I, I can respect what they do in the ring. I enjoy their characters but it's just one of those things where i don't find them that entertaining i mean both sasha and bailey have mainly done the same things their whole career so far and i think it's time for a change don't you know granted bailey has had her change but it's still just nah um so all right so who do you think's gonna win e are you talking about sasha and bailey uh they better not uh so my pick for tag team of the year is the Street Profits. Uh, they are amazing, and they're the current SmackDown champions, and I think they've just had the best year. Uh, again, like I said, with Shinsuke and Cesaro, they're hardly used. I don't think that they're going to win it. New Day, they just broke them up, so maybe they'll give it to them just because it's like, a, hey, here's a farewell to your amazing career as a as a threesome, but we just broke you up. So, But you can, you can have 2020's Tag Team of the Year. Um... Shayna and Nia, I think they're just too new, and they're really starting to take off, so I don't think they really deserve it. And then, yeah, Sasha and Bailey. Uh, all right, going next to return of the year, which I think is a little interesting 
of a title for, or well, not a title, but something that they're doing this year. Returns are so far and few in between because my definition of a return isn't just coming back from an injury that same year. I mean, I guess it could be, you know, obviously things like Triple H back in like 2003, like that was an awesome return, you know, to see him come back from something like that, even maybe Roman Reigns. So that's why he's in this category, I would assume. Um, but here's who we have. Number one, we have Edge. If you don't know who Edge is, he's a Hall of Famer, hands down. He's awesome. I love him. I'm more of an old Edge fan, more Edge and Christian. Um, but he's an amazing singles competitor. He's one of the best champions. Yeah, there you go. Uh, one of the best uh, competitors in WWE history. Number two, Goldberg. Goldberg will always have a special place in my heart because of WCW. And I respect what he does. I understand his his uh, his character, but it's also one of those things where it's just like he's he's Goldberg. He's been doing the same thing for twenty plus years. Again, I respect it. I appreciate it. But it's just like him coming back. He's been back and forth with with WWE for the past like four or five years. Yeah, go, yeah, exactly, Mom Goldberg. Like I said. I can respect him, but I, I wouldn't call that a comeback. The dude comes back like once a year for again for the past like five years. So why that is a ret- that he should be in the category of return of the year? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, number three is Roman Reigns. If I'm remembering right, I thought his cancer return was last year, but if not, then I could definitely see Roman winning return of the year just because I mean the dude fought and battled cancer and he's back with the wwe it, and it was within with less than a year so i think it's awesome i mean obviously that whether you're a wrestling fan or not having seeing anyone go through that and come back from it is just awesome um but so there's roman we'll see number four i think is kind of interesting this is mvp so we were <laughs> Oh, Roman, mom, wipe your drool like I'm wiping my sweat off my forehead right now. Uh, number four is MVP. I, me, my mom and I, when I was a kid, we kind of stopped watching wrestling around the time like MVP was getting big, when John Cena was getting big and stuff like that. It just wasn't as entertaining to us anymore. Um, but, uh, oh, yes. So, Roman Reigns. Roman's thing was the whole COVID thing. He because he was supposed to have a WWE Championship match at WrestleMania, but he had to drop out because of the whole original COVID thing because of his cancer. So yes, thank you, Red. I appreciate you throwing that back at me and letting me know. Um, MV, again, so MVP. I've never really found him that entertaining. I think personally, what he's doing right now with the uh, the Hurt Business is some of the best wrestling going on right now. They are a New Day evolution, kind of a New Day, like Nation of Domination. Um, And it has a bunch of wrestlers I honestly don't care about. But because they have them together and they have a really good story going on on with them, I really enjoy. So I could see it maybe being MVP, but just because he's been gone for 10 years or whatever. But I don't know. We'll see. And number five, Sami Zayn. This is going back to the whole, you've been gone for less than a year, so welcome back. You can be the returner of the year. I mean, all Sammy's really done is run his mouth the whole time, so I don't see that happening at all. So, plain and clear, my vote, 100%, is Edge. Edge has been gone for X amount of years. Uh, he was supposed to never be able to wrestle again. He's had really he's had really bad neck issues. Pretty sure he had to have uh, neck surgery, which he actually came back from and started wrestling again, but then re-heard it, so then he kind of called it quits. Um, yeah, and again, it, it has to be Edge because not only has he come back, and, and granted he got hurt again, but it wasn't a neck issue, so he will be back. But So he hasn't been around for a while, but his return at the Royal Rumble was absolutely amazing. 
that's why the Royal Rumble is one of my favorite pay-per-views of all time. Because normally we get at least one return or one like secret entrant. And it's just, it makes it so entertaining and fun. And this year when Edge's music hit, it was, it was awesome. And like I said, I'm not even that big of an Edge fan. It's just the fact of just the the history he has and the respect he, we all have for him in the business. So just to hear that music hit and, and, and his entrance is just iconic. Uh, so just to see that and to have him come back and then to have him have that amazing match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania this year, it was just, it was just awesome. So it, it's definitely edge for sure. Um, more than one neck surgery, I think. Yeah, <clears throat> agreed. I think it was at least maybe even two while he was first with the company and then left after he had to get that third one. Um, you think you know me. <laughs> yes, exactly. At first I thought you were talking to me like, why would you say that? And then I saw the quotes. Yeah, you think you know me. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, next category rivalry of the year i i enjoy this one a lot just because a good rivalry can really like last most of the year honestly i mean a good rivalry i've seen in the past could easily last six months so depending on the story and how they run it out a good rivalry is always great to have in the wrestling business so going in at number one is drew drew mcintyre and randy orton anything to do with randy orton is going to be good the dude is a freak in the wrestling ring. And not just that, but promos, behind like behind the scenes stuff, he's just he is a uh, all American. Again, going back to that GOAT conversation, he is he's potentially one of the GOATs of, like greatest of all time. Just because of what he does and he does it really well. It's in his blood, so I'm really happy he can do it well. Uh and then Drew McIntyre He's he's just awesome. Talk about someone who's having a great year this year. So those two always have a good rivalry. Um, it's kind of still going on. So I'm interested to see really what happens in the future with those guys. Uh, number two, Sasha and, Sasha and Bailey. Think it's interesting because this is always kind of a backspin for tag teams throughout the year. And unless you're like a cemented solid New Day type of tag team. Um, I could always see a tag team in a rivalry right here. Because if you paid attention earlier, Sasha and Bayley actually are also nominated for tag team of the year. So that's interesting. Not only are they doing tag team, but rivalry. Again, I mean, I think it's all right. They're they're doing pretty good. They both know how to spit on the mic. I really appreciate that. Um, What? He's on there twice for Reverly. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we'll see about Sasha and Bailey. Number three, Seth and the and the Mysterio family. I, th- I mean, I love Seth Rollins. He's one of the best in-ring athletes right now. Uh, yes, best friends make for the best rivalries. And that, I will stand by that almost to, like, to my grave. Every time you see... F- true real life friends or even sometimes siblings go at it in the wrestling ring it is some of the best wrestling you can ever watch um so anyway seth he's amazing i think he's honestly one of the best athletes on the current roster and on in any wrestling industry right now or any wrestling promotion he just he has it all seth is amazing um and then obviously ray mysterio and then seeing dominic mysterio come up through the ranks and kind of you know be that have that spot with his dad i love it and uh they did a really good job i love stories that involve more than just like the wrestler like in the past when you see stone cold steve austin go to brian pillman's house and break in and beat him up with in front of his wife and kids like that might sound weird to a non-wrestling fan but to a wrestling fan like that is that's just stuff that it takes to that that next level because everyone constantly is like wrestling's fake blah blah all this stuff and it's like those are the things that you can show someone and be like oh yeah it's fake dude just broke into his house and beat the shit out of him huh is that fake can i do that to you so i've always enjoyed stuff like that so with their rivalry it's, they've just done a really good job edge and randy orton so boom there it is randy orton's in here twice 
that goes back to what I said earlier about how good Randy Orton is. Uh, yeah, the Edge Randy Orton. I don't think it was very long, but that rivalry has been going on also for years, and they used to be a tag team, and then they're just longtime friends. So just seeing them get into the ring together and wrestle, obviously having Edge back, and then Randy Orton being the man who he is, is just amazing to see, and they do a great job. <laughs> Number six is R Truth versus the World. So if you don't know much about wrestling. They currently have a title called the 24-7 title. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Samoa Joe and AJ Styles, yes, that was awesome. But not nothing on that right now. Um, R-Truth versus the world. So the 24-7 title is similar to what used to, well, what used to be the hardcore title championship which if you remember from back in the wwf days maybe your early early wwe days uh there was a hardcore title and basically as long as you had a referee didn't matter where you were in the world the hardcore title was on the line so the dude could literally be leaving the locker room with the belt over his shoulder carrying a suitcase going to his car someone hits him with a chair knocks him down as long as that person has a referee and they count to three you're the new hardcore champion about as simple as that um, they got rid of that, I know, near the end, which always was kind of a bummer. But I also get to, because then it's just kind of like, okay, they're never wrestling in a ring, so what's kind of the point? But that's what the new 24-7 title is, is that I think it's only been an actual match, like on TV maybe four or five times. Like, you'll see these two dudes go head-to-head -head for the 24-7 championship. And again, it's kind of pointless because those two can have a match, but then right after that dude pins that dude, someone else is going to come out, hit him with the chair, and then pin him. So they kind of got away from doing too many one-on-one -on -one matches with the 24-7 title, which I honestly think is the best. But R-Truth is like the leader of 24-7 title reigns. He's, I think he's up to like 50. <laughs> It's, it seems like every other show, someone finds him, beats him up, gets the title, but then three minutes later, you'll go, you'll see backstage that he just won it again. It's just, it's kind of stupid, but it's also going back to that whole entertainment factor that it's like, it gives you a good chuckle, and our truth is amazing at what he does. He is great in the ring, and he's super funny, so he can really rock that title for sure. Um, and last but not least is my personal favorite, not my winner, but my favorite is Lana versus Tables. So, Lana, uh, wife of Rusev, who is now with AEW, has been having this like rivalry with Nia Jax lately, where basically anytime Nia Jax sees Lana, she just throws her through a table. It's about as simple as that. There's really not much more to explain. So, to have that in the category, I think, is just very clever on the writer's parts, and they did a really good job there. And I could honestly see it winning, just because it's literally every time Nia sees Lana, she just picks her up and fucking throws her through a table. So it's just, it's just funny. So I could actually see that winning, but my vote for being a true vote uh, would be Seth versus the Mysterio family, just because it's lasted the longest out of all these rivalries. I mean, obviously the Edge Orton has been years, but that's also hasn't been like top wrestling in the, you know, in the past, basically in the past year, plus minus five from that. So definitely the Seth versus Mysterio. It's Lana Day uh, is my pick for who I think will win that. And I think it'll be a little interesting just to see if they do and then who comes out to accept the award <laughs> just because they hate each other. So that could be very interesting. Uh, the last category I have right now, I know, like I said, I know that they're going to uh, bring in some more, but Superstar of the Year. This is a big one. Uh, obviously, this is what everyone kind of looks forward to every year um, when they have it. Just because it's, you know, this is our Emmys, our VMAs, our whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, going down the list, there's ten of them. So, we'll go through them real quick. Roman Reigns, uh, yes. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second, Red. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, number one, Roman Reigns. You know, he's the travel chief. He's the head of the table. So, we'll see kind of 
what he can do there. I, he also got fake teeth recently, so I think his smile looks really weird. And if it's not fake teeth, I want someone to explain why his teeth look so fucking huge now, because they have to be fake. Uh, <laughs> uh, number two, Asuka. Asuka's just a great competitor. She has been doing this for a long time now, and I could I could see it happening, but she's also kind of like in a story, out of a story, in a story, out of a story. So she's just kind of been thrown around all year, so I'd be kind of interested if she wins it. Number three is Drew McIntyre. Dude's been having probably one of the best years that I know of. Uh, he won a, He beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. He's the champion again. He just beat Randy Orton. I mean, he's... He's just a freak. I mean, again, this kind of goes back to the first Sugar Bear off the top rope, but he's a freak of an athlete. And I think he's honestly the freakiest of the freaks. Uh, his physique is ridiculous. His, you know, mic skills are really good. Obviously, in the ring, he's amazing. Uh, when's the COD starting, Brother Bear? Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> I've heard of none of these people. Well, Denty, you don't, you don't watch wrestling, so I don't really blame you. <laughs> uh, number four is Sasha. Nah. Nothing on that. <laughs> Sorry, Sasha. Number five, Bailey. Again, I just... Okay. Definitely not. She she had the SmackDown cha Women's Championship for about a year. but Or the Women's Championship for a year. But, I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, number six, Randy Orton. Again, you can never go wrong with him. Randy Orton is absolutely amazing. So, I would... Kudos to him if he wins it, that's for sure. Number seven, Becky Lynch. Well, first off, she was the champion at the at the beginning of the year. She actually gave it to Asuka after they wrestled, and she won. Gave it to Asuka just because, oh, wait, I'm going to go and take nine months off and have a baby. So not only did she win the championship and have it up until she left, but then she left, went through pregnancy, and had a baby. I mean, talk about a woman of the year. Definitely goes to Becky, that's for sure. And congratulations to Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins for their first baby. Uh, Rue? I think is what Whitney told me it was. R-O-U-X or something like that. So, interesting name. We like unique names just because our son's name, our oldest son's name is Baudry. And half people, half the people look at that and go, is Baudry here? Is Baudry here? Or Brody? Is Brody here? So, we totally get it. Um, but again, congratulations to you guys. Uh, number eight, The Fiend. Thought this was kind of interesting just because Bray Wyatt didn't get put in the category, but The Fiend did. And to me, The Fiend is definitely up at the top of the list. I would say he's definitely one or two of who can take this uh, Superstar of the Year just because I think he's honestly one of those characters that everyone's tuning in to watch. Whenever you hear that Firefly Fun music or Firefly Funhouse music turn on, I mean, I know our kids just say, all right, if they're not in the room, they say, okay, pause, 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 because they want to run in here and watch it. I mean, it's just something that everyone can enjoy. So, uh,. So I could definitely see him winning it. Uh, number nine is Charlotte Flair. Uh, I mean, she's the queen. I think she's one of the best female wrestlers of all time, if not the best, um, just because of the way she can wrestle and the how she does everything in the ring. She's just awesome. But I, mean, I feel like she's been gone all year. So I, maybe it's only been half the year, but 2020 has been kind of crazy for all of us. So who really knows what's going on? But I don't think it's, she has it at all. And then number 10, my oldest son's personal favorite to win this award, Braun Strowman, the monster among men. Uh, again, he's been having a great year. He just got suspended just because he started whooping some ass on a <laughs> go LeBron. Oh uh, yeah, sure. I would actually love to see LeBron James in a WWE ring. That might be pretty entertaining. Uh, but Braun Strowman, he's been having a hell of a year. They're do they have a pretty good storyline with them. I'm just kind of like they're going back to what they did when he first got his singles push after uh, the Wyatt family. Is they just kind of like he's just this big dude who keeps yelling, "Give me more opponents," and just break shit. So I don't really like that, but we'll see. But my pick is definitely going to be Drew McIntyre, just because again I think he's been having the best year out of everybody this year. And he's just, he really deserves it. He's a hell of a wrestler. He's been with the company off and on for numerous years. And I, again, I think he can be the guy that kind of carries this brand for the next, you know, five years at least. Um, him and Roman and Seth and those guys, I mean, they're just going to, 
they're a good group of guys that are going to do great things. And so, like I said, I could definitely see it going to him. And uh, I think he is well deserving of it. Uh, we're only going only to have a few more minutes left before I'm going to pause, take a little break, and then at 8 o'clock I am going to come back and we're going to stream some, I think, Phasmophobia uh, or maybe Call of Duty. I don't know what's going on yet. Talk to the Koozie gang, the, the weenie gang, and see what we're doing. Um, but just real quick, going into the new rivalry with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, is it's going to be gold. Everything they do together is one of some of the best wrestling that goes on period uh faz okay phasmophobia phasmophobia at eight o'clock um so that rivalry that they're doing especially with this fiend character is just gonna be uh it's just gonna be it's gonna be amazing so everything they do together is just gold so i am ready sorry if you could hear the gulp i'm trying not to i hate it uh, NXT, real quick. The Prince is back, baby. Finn Balor is back. He's ready to wrestle. He's no longer drinking his dinner through straws because uh, he his jaw's fixed. So that's awesome. So we're finally going to be able to see Finn Balor back. Um, just hearing you breathe. Oh, man, fuck me. Like I said, it's hot in here. I do not know what's going on. It's maybe it was because like I was super excited getting all this shit ready to go. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she got this for me. So then I'm like plugging everything in, like trying to figure out where all the plugs are because there's so many cords back there, and I'm like sweating and have like lights everywhere. Uh, so anyway, uh, yes, NXT, let's go. Finn Balor's back. He's my favorite, and I cannot wait to see what he does with that NXT title. They already kind of set up the rivalry with him and Karrion Cross, so buckle up. That's going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, and other really than that, you know, John, like, a little dabble on this. This Johnny Gargano, the way thing that he's doing with Austin, what, Austin, not Austin Aries, but Austin Theory, Austin Theory, some other chick, and then um, Candice LeRae. I really hope they come up with something better than the way like this is the way um no creative needs to figure out something else to do with them because all four of them are amazing athletes and great at what they do so i really hope they can figure something out but uh but other than that guys it's kind of a quick episode this week actually i mean it's not i mean almost 40 minutes uh i appreciate i appreciate everyone in the chat half of you don't like wrestling don't even ever want to watch wrestling so i again i appreciate you guys being here and chatting every once in a while thank you very much i love all of you guys and again i'll see you guys next week and at eight o'clock i will be or around eight o'clock we will be streaming some phasmophobia so just remember love you and stay sweet bye